It's very interesting that in one of the passages in the Torah that we recite as part of the Shema, God describes himself to us as your God who took you out of Egypt to be a God to you. Now that's accurate. We understand what that means. God freed us so that we can serve him. But that introduction seems like it's a little less than it could have been. Wouldn't it have been more impressive for God to say, I'm God who created the world or who created the universe? Why limit it to just God who freed you from Egypt. I heard an explanation once as follows. God is pointing out to us that that process of freedom, the exodus, wasn't just a historical event. It's something that each one of us, hopefully, ideally, will go through during our lives. Each one of us is enslaved and we need to be freed and we need God's help. At the Seder, We're reminded that each one of us is supposed to consider himself or herself as if we were enslaved and then freed. Not just because we're the descendants of those who were slaves and were freed. We ourselves have to get freed. Freed from what? Freed from addictions. Freed from things that control us. Freed from things that we feel are irresistible impulses. Maybe just freed from laziness. We have to break free with God's help so that we can serve him. Here's one example. I've asked this question many, many times to all sorts of different audiences. Simple one, who rules your life? Who runs your life? When I ask that question, I get a wide variety of answers. Sometimes children or even people who are adults will say, my mother or my father. Married people might say my husband or my wife. People dating might say my boyfriend or my girlfriend. Parents might say, my son or my daughter or my kids. People working might say, my boss. People have told me, the weather. People have said, the stock market. Sometimes I get people who are very religious and they might say, my rabbi. Or even more religious, they'll say, God. And I'll say, if only that were true. Can't you be honest? Tell the truth, be honest with yourself. Who rules your life? And the answer is, our phones. That may not be the answer for all of us, but it's the answer for many of us, maybe even most of us. We're like parents of newborn children. The child cries and we jump up. What is it, my baby? What can I get for you? And it's our phone and it makes a sound. And what is it, my baby? Is it a tweet? Is it an email? Is it Facebook? Is it WhatsApp? What do you got for me? And it runs our lives, controls us. It's got us at its beck and call. 24-7, or at least during our waking hours. I can't describe how thankful I am that I have Shabbos, that I have one day a week, and over the holidays, more than one day, where I can shut it off and I can take back control. A number of years ago, when my twins were younger, about three years old, one of them was telling me a typical little kid story. And when I say typical, I mean he was very excited about it, but it had no clear beginning, middle, or end. It just kept going. And he's telling me the story and I'm saying, yeah, yeah. And while he's telling it to me, of course, time is precious, so I'm multitasking. He's over here, maybe sitting on my lap, telling me the story. And I'm looking at my phone, going through some emails. And at some point in time, he reaches up, grabs my chin, and turns my head so that I'll be looking at him. To me, I understood I'm multitasking. Of course, I'm listening to the story while looking at emails. But to him, I'm telling my father a story and he's not even looking at me. He's not paying attention. Now, I wish I could tell you that since that moment, I made a resolution and I managed to kick the phone habit and it no longer controls my life and I no longer spend as much time on it. But the truth is, if anything, I spend even more time on it because there's just one more app, one more thing that I need my phone for and we kid ourselves because we say no i'm not using it for entertainment i'm using it to be productive i'm using it for work i'm using it to to watch or to record torah videos but we have to remember that device that smartphone was created for entertainment and at the end of the day that's what it is it's an entertainment device it's not a productivity device and so whether it's your phone that's causing that constriction putting you into Mitzrayim, putting you back in Egypt and you need freedom from it, or whether it's something else, let's think about it. Let's be honest with ourselves. And hopefully, by taking the first step and asking God for help, we'll be able to break free from that addiction. Good luck, and have a Chag Kasher V'Sameach, a happy and healthy Passover.